Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for connecting on uh, uh, today's session. We continue to study from the Book of Acts. Uh, and right now we are in the missionary journeys of Paul. So you know, we'll see how he goes about um, not only planting churches, but also overseeing them, raising up leaders and uh, several such things. So let's uh, first pray and then we will start our study. Let me have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace upon our lives, your faithfulness, your goodness, O oh God. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll continue to strengthen us, Lord, in our inner man. Thank you, Father, because your word is powerful. Thank you because your word is our foundation, O oh God. And Lord, uh, as we're building our lives on your word, God, that we are going to see your glory. We're going to see your power. We bless you. We honor you. Father, I speak blessings upon every single student, Lord. Uh, Father, in the online class, as well as the e-learners, Lord, and their families, their churches, O oh Father, we just speak blessings and abundance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, so I remember we had some discussion going on the last class, right, where we stopped. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, Apollos and then we moved on to Acts chapter 19, where uh, we said that there is a place called Ephesus uh, where uh, Paul comes after Corinth and there he finds out about the understanding of the believers regarding the Holy Spirit. He recognizes that uh, they don't have uh, uh, the knowledge regarding baptism in the name of Jesus as well as the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So he takes them through both of these and uh, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. And then we went on to see his ministry in um, Ephesus where there were unusual miracles. Remember, we were discussing about uh, cloth and uh, praying over cloth, praying over material objects. Uh, is this correct? Is this not correct? Some of those questions were what we were at. So we come back to Acts chapter 19. Uh, we are uh, in verse 11. So verse 11 is where we saw that God worked unusual miracles. So is there anyone else through whom God worked unusual miracles earlier? If you can recall. Something unusual. Sorry? Yeah, in the book of Acts. I think it is Peter. Okay. And uh, which unusual miracle did he, uh, or, or uh, he, he saw uh, an unusual miracle in his life? What was that? Shadow of Peter. Correct, correct. The shadow of Peter. So what is the difference between this miracle and the other miracle? Your place was not a limitation. A place, is it? Yes. Um, yeah. I was saying okay. the material could, could have been taken to sick people uh, wherever they are and then healing could happen. True, true. So the material could be transported. Whereas obviously shadow, it's a non-material uh, I don't even know what to call it, substance or phenomenon. Uh, so you cannot really carry it around. That's true. Any other difference that you are able to notice? I think Acts 5 is where the, the shadow of Peter was healing people. Okay, so the simple difference is, as I stated, material and non-material. When we pray over things, we trust God for the power of God to go into it and then to touch people's lives. But um, it's not just limited to things. God can just work even if there's no, if, even if there's nothing, uh, because that's what a shadow is. So the point we are making is 
we might observe some unusual phenomenon from time to time as long as we are able to confirm that um, it is yielding the fruit of the spirit it is yielding the fruit for the kingdom of god meaning people are being healed they're being touched their hearts are being drawn to jesus uh, there is a possibility you know for us to sort of assess it and accept it uh, but just because it's unusual in a lot of um, you know, when we read about uh, revivals we may see some things happening that we are not familiar with so we question in revival how can this happen you know we've not seen it's not there in the bible well yes it's not there in the bible um here there are two unusual miracles but even when things happen in our own lives which may not be mentioned in the bible as long as it falls into the frame of glorifying god um being of the holy spirit transforming lives causing people to worship and honor god we know that it's from god so uh that that is something that you know we can we can uh understand that it's coming from god right so i don't want to mention uh, some of the phenomenon that has happened in in church history because uh, uh you know people find it controversial some people can accept it whereas some people don't want to accept it so we won't look into the specifics but in general i'm saying if we observe a phenomenon which is leading us to god and honoring the lord jesus it's likely that the lord is doing that uh, but he's doing it in a different way so be open to different things that god may do now coming back to uh you know the handkerchiefs and aprons carrying the power of god uh, how do we understand this i think we we've, we've talked about this in the keys to supernatural ministry how come you know material things carry impartation okay impartation uh, uh maybe we could use that as a term but that won't be the appropriate term uh any other term that you can think of right now when material objects can carry the power of god god is limitless he can use any medium that that's true but uh let's say in the case of a substance or a medium what is it carrying that brings about the miracle any answers okay let's consider oil okay we put oil on people and we pray for people that's a material what might it carry that brings about the healing or the deliverance it doesn't carry anything i have a feeling aha uh -huh. that uh, uh it's not in the material it's not in them it is always the will of god it's always the will of god that works but uh uh we do we do it because of some historical reasons or to raise the 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 faith of other people because some people know literally when they read through the bible that uh, for instance when we see samuel going to anoint king david so they take it like that that once they are being anointed things will work but i don't think that it is in the material it okay. is always yeah thank you so much uh, lubega for uh, you know thinking this through so uh, you're saying it's not in the material um so so it, it's not the material but then what is it uh, that is the question and john is saying faith of the people will only bring healing i think uh, so sure all all of you are thinking along the right lines so when we consider 
generally material objects one way that we can understand what is going on is the power and the presence of the holy spirit is carried by that material so we use the word anointing okay the anointing anoint them with oil and pray for them you know james 5 it says what what exactly happens is the faith that we carry and the presence of the holy spirit that we carry uh in a way we can imagine like i think jafina used the word imparted so we can imagine that that power goes into that object okay so it's not about the object the object could be anything the object could be the substance could be water or oil or cloth or you know some sort of a food item anything absolutely anything but the faith that we carry and the presence and the power of the holy spirit that we term as the anointing uh gets if you may say transferred or into that substance it's as simple as that so when we pray for someone or we send out a cloth we pray over the cloth we are not able to go see them or we pray over some oil we are not able to go see them we send it out to them and say okay use this uh pray put it on the sick uh, part and uh, you will be healed so the anointing of the spirit ministers to that person and sets them free now my question is uh do we need that substance or can we just minister without the substance okay so jafina says we can do it without the substance so uh, as we've learned in the subject healing and deliverance let's understand that we must go by the the leading of the holy spirit so as the holy spirit directs us sometimes god may put it in our hearts that okay you pray for some pray uh, ask them for some oil and you anoint with oil then the healing will come so then in that case do it that way but maybe like some situations like you had the centurion who came to jesus and asked jesus for the healing of his sick servant and jesus just spoke right and uh, in that moment immediately the servant was made well just the word touched him and the word healed him so you didn't need any substance to minister so this is how we would understand uh, you know unusual miracles and uh, many different modes or methods of ministering healing or deliverance to the people so uh, what about uh, the thought of you know these days we have people who who may sell the uh kerchiefs or sell some prayer oils so any views on that no views So if you don't have any views i i am left with no option but to keep sharing my views any thoughts about you know would it be okay to pray over some material and maybe sell it because it's beneficial for the people um yeah if it is a must that i have to pray over something and i send it to somebody uh -huh. i would do it for free you would do it for for free for free okay why lubega why why would you want to do that for free freela will receive and freela should give amen amen so uh yes that is our understanding uh, because we find that jesus when he commissioned the believers we see this in uh, matthew chapter 10 and verse 8 where he says heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely give so the power of god that we have received we have received by grace we have received through the redeeming work of jesus already we have received it freely 
so we must give it out without any cost to the people because we don't uh, we're supposed to follow the pattern of jesus's ministry isn't it and we don't see him really charging people for uh uh, the power of God. So uh, these are all things that one must remember if we go back to uh, what we learned in our first year, the Code of Honor, uh, where we said that when we do ministry, we have to do it in an honorable way such that nobody blames the ministry that we do. So even in the Book of Acts, when we see so much of the supernatural being manifested, we don't really see the apostles uh, uh, talking as if they are entitled to the power of God, uh, which is being released through their lives, or uh, putting heavy burdens on the people and saying, look, you need to pay us, you need to honor us, because uh, we are flowing in the anointing and the power of... We don't see any, any such things, because God's power uh, is given to the leaders as well as the believers, and each one is... Um, with with that heart of ministering or serving is is going on touching the lives of many people so that's our understanding and uh, it's best to kind of stay clear of uh, any form of merchandise now people justify uh, merchandise with the explanation that okay like if we sell some some of these kerchiefs or you know things which can heal others then that money we can use for the ministry but uh you know uh we're raising money for the ministry can be done in other ways as well because here it causes a confusion when you charge people for the miracles that they are receiving so uh yeah we really need to think about all these matters and uh, do things in an honorable way so that's the whole point so now we've understood about uh, paul and the uh, unusual miracles that took place through his life now it says unusual miracles so we don't know if there are more than this what what happened but one is stated by luke and we see the next incident here where there were some itinerant Jewish exorcists. Exorcists are people who cast out demons and uh, seems like they were professional. Uh, this is what they did for a living. And uh, what they did at that time is they noticed Paul casting out demons in the name of Jesus. So they tried doing it the same way. So, But how did they, they exactly say the command they said we exercise you by the jesus whom paul preaches okay so uh it was not their belief or their faith they just sort of backed on the faith of paul and they tried to cast out demons very clearly in this passage we notice it did not work because the demon said jesus i know paul i know but who are you now uh of, after that we find that the demon possessed man, he overpowered uh, the seven sons of Skiva and they were uh, uh, beaten, they were naked and wounded. Now, why why couldn't they cast out the demons? Any, any uh, opinion on that? Seven sons of Skiva. I think it's because of their unbelief. Okay, it's because of their unbelief. All right, that's one opinion. Any other? If you look at ten, uh, look at Luke ten nineteen. It's the same Luke who wrote. He said that uh, Jesus sent out the disciples to go uh, do the work of the miracles. And uh, he said, nothing by any means shall harm you. Now, how come these, these uh, men who are trying to cast out demons are getting beaten up? They're not supposed to be harmed, right? <laughs> I don't think so because... <laughs> The other saying was to believers. It was to, but these guys weren't. Were not believers because we see it, but that they were doing it like uh, out of cut and paste, or uh -huh. copy and paste. And uh, number one, they were not believers. Number two, I think themselves were doing it 
literally i think they were doing it to get something out of it and i think it all goes back to believing it they had to first of all confess that jesus christ was lord and savior to be baptized yes. and that and then act in that same anointing of the holy spirit True. not through cut the copy okay sure so uh thank you lubega for uh, sharing that thought because it helps us recognize that uh it's not just about the principles in the word of god some principles can work uh, for a long time uh, some are just you know uh, principles that even unbelievers can apply like when we study about uh, workplace uh, we can we can use principles like diligence hard work uh, integrity excellence it will work for the believers as well as the unbelievers whereas when we come to a uh, thing such as walking in the power of god uh it will not work for the unbeliever simply because they are not born again they do not belong to the kingdom of god and you you know how scriptures tell us that uh, the believer is sealed by the power of the holy spirit and it is the believer who has the promise that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water this cannot be the portion of an unbeliever so in this case the professional exorcists or the people who cast out demons just try to apply the principle what was the principle in the name of jesus they noticed paul what is this man doing come out in the name of jesus so they just used the same thing they said okay uh, demons come out in the name of jesus but then they said the the jesus who paul preaches they didn't believe so because they were not believers it did not work for them okay and another uh, reality for us to recognize is in the uh, supana in the spiritual world uh, in the demonic kingdom demons know who is their own and who is not their own so they knew very well that jesus paul they are all part of the kingdom of light but these guys who are just using the name of jesus they are not authorized to use the name of jesus they are part of their own kingdom you know the the kingdom of darkness and so they were able to attack them easily so none of those those promises of god where we said earlier right that uh, nothing by any means shall harm you it was not applicable at all because these men were not believers now when unusual miracles took place uh, people were being uh, delivered and uh, you know we we find that uh, it was the authority that paul carried that actually set people free and when this incident of the sons of skiva being unsuccessful in their attempt was noticed by the people around uh, the bible says that in ephesus there were greeks jews and greeks who were dwelling now they all started putting their Uh, sort of fearing this god and uh, you know they started glorifying the the lord jesus christ for the power that his name carried and then people also started uh, believing they started confessing and you remember i had mentioned that ephesus had the worship of a certain goddess uh, would you recall who is that diana yeah the goddess diana uh, so here we also observe that there was along with the the worship of uh, the goddess diana people were given into uh, sorcery and uh, uh, the occult so that was a part of their uh, their uh, you know their culture now look at how god ministers in each city depending on uh what will impact the people so ephesus is a is a uh, you may call it like a spiritual a very spiritual city okay uh spiritual in the opposite sense because if there is sorcery black magic and uh, uh, people immersing themselves in the occult obviously they they have experienced the supernatural and which is why now that apostle paul when he goes to a place like this you know witchcraft and everything what is demonstrated through paul's life the supernatural also but from the right source so then people are now getting awakened 
they are recognizing hey uh, there seem to be a greater power very similar to samaria where uh, even simon the sorcerer was amazed at the power which was being demonstrated through peter and john so people started believing in god people started understanding that uh, the powers that they had put their faith in that uh, they are not the real uh, god and uh, so the awakening came about in this particular uh, city so let's see what exactly happens so people are now confessing christ they're giving their lives to uh, jesus and in uh, verse 19 of Ephesians 9 uh, sorry uh, acts 19 we see that many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50000 pieces of silver so one thing we can understand is you know a, a piece of silver was pretty expensive uh, in in the bible times so uh, we can we can understand that a lot of money a lot of money was what was kind of uh, uh, used up in the worship of all these gods but all that equipment or material they were fine to burn it up okay they were fine to destroy it so it shows the repentance that people had you know when you go back to the lives of people like uh, zacchaeus you do you remember he was ready to pay back four times of the money that he had taken from the people so true repentance is seen because they were willing to let go of what was valuable to them so it really shows us the kind of change that came about in the hearts of people so uh, what the point that i'm trying to make is in every city where uh, the you know the teams went in this case we know paul is the one that we are observing now barnabas also was traveling we don't know what cities he had touched but there was an impact right if it was athens so intellectual the impact was different they were able to preach the gospel and draw the attention of the people from worshiping creation to creator if you go back to corinth you know a sin city where uh, uh, immorality ruled and reigned paul he 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 ensured that he kind of gave his best there and he endured in the midst of all this immorality 18 months remember he fasted he made a vow because he lived a moral life in the midst of that sin city and preached the gospel he raised up a team together with him so there was a real impact in that place was there a good church that was thriving obviously because they had to send apollos to continue ministering to that church so there's a nice church now in corinth now coming to ephesus there is a powerful ministry that is taking place even uh, in this particular city and uh, uh, you know a, a clear impact has taken place now riots break out in ephesus why because uh, again they are observing that these men who are preaching christ are disturbing the course of our lives so we've got to get rid of these men so riots begin to um, uh, like uh, you know happen and uh, this will force paul and his team out of the city so let's go ahead and look at uh, you know this particular riot that takes place in ephesus now did was there anything else that actually happened in ephesus apart from the miracles of uh, Paul, do you recall anything more significant that took place here? Did we discuss it earlier? Sorry. Yeah, baptism. Okay, and uh, uh, even uh, what do you call uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit? That's also fine. That happened. Anything else that you can recall? something special unique to ephesus
okay i'm just uh, trying to understand you know how much attention all of us are paying we discussed it in the last class something very very special i have to give so many clues <laughs> to get the answer out out of everyone okay let's see who's going to get this nobody all right so uh, do you recall we had mentioned the school of tyrannus for 2 years paul ministered there and uh, it is important because in ephesus the training of many uh, you know you, you you might say men women of god happened for two years paul taught from ephesus and people were able to come to ephesus and equip themselves okay so that is another special special uh, if you want to call it uh, ministry of paul that we must that we could remember so similar to corinth where they taught the word of god 18 months and equipped the people for a strong church we recognize that in ephesus there was a strong church and there were people coming in to learn and go back and impact their own cities their own regions so uh, let let's not forget that so acts 19 uh, puts together the teaching and the the supernatural demonstration ministry of paul all this took place in ephesus and then of course the riots break out so let's go ahead and look at the riots here so obviously you know people are threatened by the ministry of paul because so much is going on and they feel this guy you know he will take over these people will take over what will happen to our businesses what will happen to our uh, uh city and the governance so from verse 21 uh, to all the way till verse 41 would somebody like to go ahead and read this please Okay, uh, okay, let me go. go ahead, please. Yeah. Verse 21. Yes. Okay. When these things were in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achidia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him Timothy and Erastus but he himself stayed in Asia for a time and about and about that time there arose a great commotion about the way for a certain man named Demetrius a silver a silver smith who made silver shrines of Diana brought no small profit to the craftsmen he called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said men you know that we have our prosperity by this trade moreover you see and hear that no that not only at ephesus but all throughout but throughout almost all asia this poor has persuaded and turned away many people saying that 
that are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of fading into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worshiped. Now, when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, great is Diana of Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gassius and Aristarchus, Aristarchus, Macedonians and Paul's tra travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried out, cried one thing and an, some another, for they, the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew, and they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the, to the people. But they found out that he was a Jew. All with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what is there? What man is there who does not know that the city, that the city of Ephesians is a temple guardian of the great goddess Diana? and of the image which flew down from Zeus. Therefore, since these things can't be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought this, these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellows craftsmen have a a case against anyone the courts are open and 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 there are precursors let them bring charges against one another but if you have other inquiry to make let it shall be determined in a lawful assembly for we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lubega. So as we have observed here, there is an uproar against uh, Paul, similar to how it was even earlier. Remember in Corinth, he was so, uh, the opposition was so strong that Paul was beginning to get discouraged and God spoke to him and said, you know, you're not alone. There are others here and I am with you. So God strengthened him in his spirit which is why he was able to continue the work. Now, we noticed that Paul stayed on in this place called, uh, uh, this. Uh, it is called Asia here, but we know that it's the Asia Minor region. And in the book of Revelation, you find those seven churches, uh, which are all in the in this particular region. So those seven churches. So he stayed here and he ministered to, uh, uh, you know, to the people whom God had given him. And obviously these people were the ones who went and, kind of touched all those uh, churches powerfully. And we noticed that uh, even here, like in all other cases, uh, earlier we saw in Corinth, they, when the accusation comes against Paul, the authorities say that uh, if, you know, this is a matter of your own words and your, uh, your religion, your faith, like don't bring it to the courts because it's not a legal matter. So you resolve it among yourselves. And somehow the case got dismissed. And again, over here, when uh, Demetrius, this man is very upset because he feels now that people are putting their faith in uh, uh, Jesus, nobody will will uh you know the the goddess dina and the shrines of goddess dina will lose their importance and uh, his business will be affected so it was a very selfish reason that demetrius had and uh, he tried to uh, create 
some uh, opposition and trouble for Paul. But thankfully, even in this case, it's really beautiful to see that uh, people like Paul uh, ministered in such integrity that such a great opposition is coming against them that but people are not able to convict them of of something accusation is there but not convicted so again regarding paul the authorities say uh, verse 37 for you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess so notice how they did the ministry that people could not catch them only no evil work nor an evil word like even though it was goddess diana right paul could have preached against goddess diana but we noticed that that's not what he did because they could not say that he was a blasphemer of the goddess so uh they were very wise in the way they ministered and uh, literally nothing could uh, tie them down uh, they were uh, uh you know very honored even by the opposers so that's a great example for us to consider as we do ministry uh, right now that we must not let anything not allow anything to be there through which people can uh, you know accuse us and say hey you've done something wrong so uh, that's a challenge really for us and finally we observe that uh, because Demetrius was trying to gather the crowds and create uh, an uproar, the authorities, they did not like it. So in, in these times, what would happen is if in any region there is a crowd or an unruly mob, the Roman government will come and they'll take over. You know, we call it uh, in our kind of uh, uh, democracy you know things like precedence rule and all we we use those those terms where the unruly state is taken over the the uh, the rule of that place is seized by the main main authorities so they got scared that uh, when the mobs rise up and all this is going on the place may be seized so they stopped demetrius and said uh, come on whatever you're doing it it has no uh, strong a point against Paul so you know you you just uh, let this go and uh, don't gather an unruly gathering or a, an assembly of disorder and they kind of dismiss the assembly so in this way Paul actually escapes even from Ephesus so what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead we'll uh, take a break and then we'll come back we will uh, continue with Acts 20 okay so quite a bit for you to digest there so I just felt maybe I give you some time. If you have questions, of course, we'll come back, we'll discuss, and we'll uh, continue. So we'll go ahead for a break now, everyone, and then we'll meet at uh, uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> 